Welcome compadres. Today we're going to go through and actually develop a shell model from a component that's mounted on an air vehicle. So you can see this is the component we're looking at right now. It includes a frame, a cover, and a mass in the middle. And it's actually orientated um, from this coordinate system right here, this global coordinate system. So its center of rotation is about this point so you can think of it like maybe it's mounted on a uh, airplane or something like that um, the center of rotation is going to be sitting out here in space and so we got to take that into consideration when we do dynamic analysis but for this video we're just going to show you how to import it into abacus and um, simplify it down so we can actually run a finite element analysis on it. And so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to save it as a step file. Just save a copy. <clears throat> and we'll just save it as component.asm. Once we have it saved, we can go into Abacus and we can import it. And it should keep that global coordinate system. Um, so Let's see, component, there we go. And so we're going to just leave it to that default name and import all parts. We're going to create individual parts. Sometimes you want to combine it into one part. Um, but for now, this is a simple model. We'll just bring it all in as individual parts. You'll see we'll get uh, three parts here, the frame, the cover, and the mass. What we want to do now is probably rename these. And so just right click, say rename, cover frame, cover. Um, let's see here. And mass. So we got a label now. Now we can go look at our model, try to simplify it down. We're really going to focus on the cover and the frame because the mass is not really, we don't want to derive any, do any meaningful stress analysis on it, but it is important as we will see in a later video. But let's just model the cover and frame right now. So you can see that the cover um, it actually is uh, very thin relative to its length and width dimensions. So this is a perfect candidate for a shell model. So one thing I like to do when I try to model a shell is I try to make things as square as possible. In this case, you don't really have to do it for this one, um, but I'm just going to walk through the mechanics. So we're going to actually remove these rounds. The way you do that is you go to Faces and you go to Replace. Some of this terminology in Abacus isn't really, <laughs> is very mysterious, but um, this is how you remove rounds and you have to check this Extend Neighboring Faces. What we're going to do is uh, just click all these rounds and you can click them all at once. Uh, just hold down shift to select multiple faces and then middle mouse click and you can see now we have a square part. So the next step um, we actually want to create a mid surface so before you shell a part um, you have to assign a mid surface region and I'll click that and click the cells and I've assigned a mid surface region right here and so to actually make a shell from this you have to go into um, offset faces here so select the faces you want to offset and then you can select up to a target face or you can select auto select and it'll find it for you um, that looks good and so you'll press OK and there is your shell and actually um, we're going to remove the render or the reference representation right here and you can see that is your shell of that cover just a flat uh, 
2D representation of a 3D model. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, move on to the next one. So we'll move on to the frame. The frame, um, you can see it's a little more complex, um, but we can still um, make a shell element out of this. Um, so I'm just going to step through that first. We want to remove any rounds. And so we'll do the same process. Go through replace, extend neighboring faces. Don't forget that. And I'm going to click on these fillets and rounds. And it takes a little while, but you know, it's uh, definitely simplifies the model down where you can run a analysis pretty quickly. And you can use, you know, space claim to help you do this, but in Abacus, it's, it's really advantageous to do it in Abacus. Um, it just makes things simpler. Just take my word for it. Um, because when you're doing an iterative design process with a bunch of engineers, um, things can change quickly. And um, <laughs> so there we have it. So looks like I missed one right here, but you get the point right. And uh, so we've gone ahead and removed all the rounds. Next thing we want to do is we want to assign a mid-surface region. So we'll go back, assign a mid-surface region to the entire frame. And that's what you have right now. Now we want to start to create the uh, shells. So we go back, same process. And this is really an art. Um, I'm not going to tell you that there's one best way to do it um, but I'm going to start with the top here middle mouse click auto select and that looks good I'll say OK and I'll go ahead and do these faces and pause the video um, and um, we'll move on to the next step so I've went ahead and did our offset faces now I got a bunch of shells now I gotta connect them all together part of shell modeling is you have to connect the shells together you can't leave any gaps so there's several ways to do this in Abacus um, it all boils down to the geometry edit tool and to get these faces to connect I like to use this extend faces and what we do is um, we can see we have some gaps on the bottom here so I'm gonna go ahead and um, select a edge that I want to extend and I can select multiple edges and you can do well I'm going to middle mouse click and I'm going to actually select this up to reference representation so it's just going to um, use the reference representation that we've been uh, showing here and it's just going to extend all the way to the, the bottom of this this uh, outline right here and we'll do the same thing for the top There's a gap right there, so extend faces. I want to select these edges. And 
and this takes some time guys I mean uh, being a structural analyst is not easy it's one of the hardest jobs uh, but it's very rewarding uh, especially the technical knowledge you gain by doing this and so um, you can see that we have some overlapping right here between the shell elements we want to actually trim that up and um, so another you go back to the geometry edit tool and you go to remove and you can select these trim these out and you do that same process all the way around and um, that's how you do that you just make things uh, connected no overlaps flush together and I'm gonna pause the video and do the rest of this clean it up but you get the point so I've trimmed up the model and made sure everything's connected so this is what our frame looks like now it's pretty clean clean cut and um, we should be able to take this now and assign a thickness to it so let's go to the property tab I've done the Liberty and created um, properties for aluminum 6061 and an aluminum 7050 we're gonna call the frame aluminum 6061 and the cover aluminum 7050 so first step we want to do is we want to assign a shell thickness to these the way to do that is to create a section so if we go over here to this selection over here we're going to call this aluminum 6061 and I like to we're going to have to assign multiple thicknesses in this case it looks like three um, what we have here is we have this top portion it's going to have a certain thickness we have to go back to the model to look and see what that is um, if you measure it in Creo it's basically a tenth of an inch or a hundred thou, hundred mil, whatever you want to call it, whatever you used to call it <laughs> and we'll go back and um, so I'll do that 0 0.10 and you're gonna select shell homogeneous and you don't want to add periods here the value shell thickness 0.1 it's gonna be aluminum 6061 as I denoted and then what we have to do next is we have to assign that section to a region so we'll have to create a set in abacus you have to do this a lot just get used to it and so I'm gonna select this I'm gonna call it just uh, Aluminum 6061 01 and we're going to assign it from the middle surface everything's flush so we're good here and um, but you may have to change that you may have to introduce an offset in some cases I'll get into that in later videos um, and it turns green so uh, that means you've assigned a section to that region and you're good to go and we do the same thing for everything around the corner we go back to our Creo model and we just say what is the thickness of this front face well it happens to be a tenth of an inch right so we can actually go back to regions and go to set manager and um, edit this and we want to assign the same shell thickness to this and we'll have to look at the bottom here and the bottom is actually a little bit thicker it's 0.2 so 20 thou or I'm sorry 200 thou we'll go back to abacus and create a new section aluminum 6061 it's a shell sign a value thickness the material so okay 
assign that section from the middle surface and we've done all we can with this and one thing you want to do um, this is just a check um, to make sure you have everything right um, you'll find yourself doing this a lot when you're doing finite element analysis you want to show the reference representation and you want to render the shell thickness and what that does is it puts your your reference representation on there and it extends your thickness so if I turn this off you can see your thicknesses you can see them and if you show the feature representation um, you can see that we're well within uh, we fit into the the volume of our original model and you'll see that we have some uh, corners here that uh, overextend that's part of the, the cons of shell modeling but um, it eases the computation time and you can see that you're going to have some overlap between some shell elements um, that's just uh, part of modeling with shells you're going it's actually going to change your mass and inertia loads a little bit but it's so minimal that it really doesn't make a difference and um, also this element right here since it's got a longer uh, length it's going to be a little more flexible but once again that's the sacrifices with shell modeling that you make to simplify and run an analysis and uh, so um, thought I'd give you a little bit of background on, on some of that I was just that always uh, stunned me when I first began but I just realized that your geometry is going to change a little bit but it's going to benefit on the post-processing side and so that's how you do that. I'm going to go ahead and um, do the cover. Um, we can see here it's going to be made of aluminum 7050. And um, I'm going to turn off the shell thick, uh, the uh, render here. We'll go back into Creo or any modeling software that you have and um, measure the thickness of this it's a quarter of an inch thick or 250 thou so you can see it's it's just the same process uh, it's it's um, repetitive um, aluminum 7050 and then the thickness is going to be a quarter of an inch assign a value uh, our material and then assign the section to a region And from the middle surface and we're done guys so that's how you do that that's how you um, basically you create a shell model that's all it is so um, we'll continue on the next video we'll we'll deal with that uh, mass I'll show you how to deal with that and then we'll go into the loading scenarios that a aerospace engineer would typically look at so guys I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you next time adios